Well, hi there, and welcome to Failure Bites, Bite Back. I'm Alberto Savoia, that's me there, and this is a series of videos based on my book, The Right It, Why So Many Ideas Fail and How to Make Sure Yours Succeed. Once again, to give credit where credit is due, a lot of this work was developed at Google, perfected at Stanford, and I'm very happy to share it with you both in my book and through these videos lessons. In this episode, we're going to talk about the dangers of OPD and the wonders of Yoda. What do those words stand for? Stick with me and you'll find out in a couple of minutes. But before we go there, let's have a quick reminder from previous episode. Remember, you have to make sure that you're building the right it before you build it right. The right it is an idea that if competently executed will succeed in the market. And as we've learned, most ideas are not the right it. So you build them well, you market them well, and yet they fail in the market. We also talked about the dangers of Thoughtland where if all you have is an idea and you just tell people what they think of your idea, you get back opinions. And we've learned that opinions are dangerous because most of the time they give you either a false positive or a false negative. And then we concluded with this uh, expression that we use at Google, data beats opinion. You need data, market data to make your decision and that data cannot be based on opinion. Do not invest in good ideas, invest in good data. Now, what do I say good data? Well, because not all data is created equal. There are two main types of data when it comes to market research. I call them OPD and Yoda. OPD stands for other people's data. Can you guess what Yoda stands for? I'm sure most of you got it correctly. It stands for your own data. And when it comes to making decisions about the viability and the potential success for your product, OPD and Yoda are like the proverbial apples and oranges, except that in this case, the apples are rotten and old and the oranges are fresh and juicy. You want to get fresh, juicy data to make your decision. OPD is dangerous and you should not depend on it. Now let's define OPD a little bit more precisely. OPD is data collected by other people at other times, in other places, for other purposes, with other methods and very often Thoughtland methods. People asking, what do you think of this idea? And we know that we don't want to depend on Thoughtland based methods. So you want to discard other people data because it's dangerous. And why is OPD dangerous? I talk about it a lot in my book, but here's one example just to drive the point home. Imagine when Elon Musk was thinking about starting Tesla, imagine if instead of pursuing his own vision, he looked at market data, he looked at what happened to other companies, companies bigger and better equipped and more experienced than his uh, was to, to do electric cars. So if you looked at the companies that succeeded in the market with electric cars before Tesla, he would have seen zero. Most of them failed. They failed miserably. So if he had depended on OPD, he would have never pursued Tesla. So OPD is dangerous because it just misguides you, right? It leads you in the wrong direction. You want to collect your own data, Yoda, which is data gathered firsthand, locally, recently, rigorously, and most importantly, with skin in the game. What do I mean by skin in the game? I mean that for, for something to, before you put your own skin in the game, before you invest a lot of time and money to develop your idea, you, ma you want to see that the market is interested enough in your idea to give you some of their own skin in the game, right? And that could manifest itself in the form of money, time, commitment, information, perhaps your reputation. The market has to give you back something of value and at risk, not just their opinion, oh, it's a good idea or it's a bad idea. You want to try to get some skin in the game. Let me give you an example. Uh, Harriet has an idea for a smart hammer. Let's assume it's a hammer that you know, always hit the nail on the head and you never hit your finger. She explains the idea to some construction workers. Some of them think it's a good idea. Some of them think it's a lame idea. As we know, this, all of this is happening in Totland and these are just opinions. There is no skin in the game. In another scenario, Harriet explains it to, an, to uh, some other construction workers. Some will, of course, say it's a lame idea. So they're dead to her, right? Because they're not potential customer, at least not for now. But some of them give them money. 
say, hey, here's 50 bucks. I want to be the first in line. Well, that is Yoda. That is skin in the game. That is what you want to get from the market. Most of the time, uh, you know, it, pe people have no trouble opening their mouth and telling you that their idea, uh, whether your idea is good or bad. It is much harder to get them to open their wallet. Opening their wallet indicates real strong interest in your idea, which is what you need to make sure that your idea is the right it. So remember, it's much easier to get people to open their mouths than their wallet. Ignore what they say. Look at whether they're willing to pay. And the way that you need to think about your market research, instead of thinking along these lines, if we build it, will you buy it? Which is all a thoughtland transaction, all based on hypothesis. You need to flip it around. You need to start thinking of this mode. If you buy it, we will build it. Now, I realize that this is big 180 degrees from the way most people approach market research. It may seem difficult, it may seem impossible, but it's not, right? You may think, don't I have to have the product or service available before I can collect Yoda? The answer to that is no. You will find out that collecting Yoda is faster, easier, better, more fun, more reliable than depending on OPD. You do not build your idea. You pre-totype it. What do I mean by pre-totyping? Well, that's what I will cover in the next episode, which will be an introduction to the power of pre-totyping. I hope you're finding this video lessons useful. If you do, I'm sure you would love my book, The Right It, because I go into greater details on all of these points. And uh, I hope to see you back for the next video on pre-totyping. Thank you so much for listening. Bye-bye.